Good morning, folks. We've had more solar flares. We've got more sunspots coming. We'll take a better look at some of the CMEs. We'll look at the sunspots, seismicity, potentially related news, and two top science articles. One on the many impacts of our star and the other a deeper dive into magnetoreception navigation. Let's start with our star and find the last 24 hours flashing and with coronal motions. Nothing as spectacular as the days before. Couple M-class flares, still no coronal holes, but a significant solar watch as we go forward towards the weekend. In terms of the solar flaring, you will see the flashes of the M-class events here at the northern incoming and southern incoming sunspot groups. Those flashes were the main flares we took over the last day, and just this morning, the departing spot on the south said a little goodbye as well. Another M-class flare there at the limb. Let's use SOHO to watch some of the CMEs produced over the last couple days, several smaller ones and two larger ones heading north and south. None of the eruptions have been Earth-directed, which is a very good thing, but we have seen atmospheric ionization from the flares and even a magnetic crochet late on the 9th when one of the X-class flares actually disrupted Earth's entire magnetic field. Here's a quick look at the sunspot groups we currently have on the Earth facing half of the sun. You can see a bit of motion and development or decay, with the largest development occurring at the northern incoming sunspot groups. This morning the caboose is growing and gaining umbral cores. As we can also see in 171 angstroms, there is more coming, apparently. These large arching fields over the limb indicate that more active regions are on their way into view, both on the north and the south. The second X-class flare from a couple days ago ionized the Southeast Pacific, if you'll recall from our live stream. And just as the previous one ionized the Southwest Pacific and was followed by quakes, we've got above average rumbling here. Luckily not too big, and hopefully it is all we'll get. After the USA had its flight systems issues yesterday, we apparently had similar problems in parts of Canada. As I said last night, there's no way to definitively tell if it's solar related or solar fear related on the part of the government, but time and time again, these flight system issues match up with inclement space weather. Can't ignore coincidence forever. Good look here at the impacts of solar activity on everything from cyclical natural anomalies to economics, military, and other social phenomena. These have been documented for decades, actually. But this is a good one here on the impact of the sun on the more complex and nuanced aspects of life. Top story is one on both the solar and the geomagnetic disruption impact to avian navigation via magnetoreception. Nothing new here, but a good reminder of how when the magnetic field gets deeper into its ongoing shift and when we get bigger solar impacts, the food chain is going to be impacted in considerable ways. The biggest, largely uncovered story in the media today is how our magnetic field is changing. Folks, we're going to try to go live tonight, 5 p.m. Mountain Time, which will be 7 p.m. Eastern. We do hope to see you there. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn more about the sun, the ongoing magnetic shift, and much more with your key resources linked in the description box below the video. Hopefully we see you for the live stream tonight. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.